Welcome back to How to Be a Better DM, the official podcast of Monsters.Rent. I'm Justin Lewis. And I'm Tanner Wayland. And we are here to help you tell better stories for yourself and your players as you dungeon master sessions of D&D, Dungeons and Dragons. We'd like to give you some quick announcements. We actually have one before the show. And then after the show, if you want to stick around, we have some more announcements then as well. Uh, But first, let's talk about this. Tired of being alone? Are you tired of not having any of your players understand you? Are you tired of never truly belonging? Well, you're in luck. All you need to do is join the Guild. The Guild is a unique and exclusive experience that is only open to Dungeon Masters. It is a full community focused on helping ease your DMing burdens. Want to meet other DMs? Join the Guild. Want to discuss your homebrew ideas with people who would appreciate it instead of just telling your cat? Join the guild! Want to find a place where all your wildest dreams will come true? Join the guild! Go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free. Wait, that can't be right. Chuck, Chuck, can you check this again? Is this supposed to be... What? Oh, it's... They're serious? It's free? Oh. Okay, all right. Yes, go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free, even though they are crazy for giving this away for free. Common side effects may include burping, sneezing, laughing, breathing, hearing, listening, tasting, farting, critting, sarcasm, and in extreme cases, explosive diarrhea. Awesome. With that out of the way, we can get into today's show. Welcome back to How to Be a Better DM. I'm your host, Tanner Wayland, here with my cohort and friend, Justin Lewis. How are you doing, Justin? I'm good. Thanks, Tanner. Great. Glad to hear it. Uh, We're here to help you, Justin, specifically you. No, I'm just kidding. You and everybody else that's listening. um, Tell better stories as you DM sessions of D&D. And usually we would say D&D 5e. But as everybody knows, uh, one D&D, quote unquote, is coming out. Uh, So, you know, we'll see. The world's changing, and uh, we might have to change with it. Either way, exciting things. Um, I bring it up because we're actually going to be talking about uh, with these this one D and D that Wizards of the Coast has announced. Um, and so, what we're going to be doing is uh, we kind of decided to change format. Usually, we do a lot of announcements at the start. We're going to do it at the end. We just want to, you know, get to the meat so that you guys enjoy it, and then. Uh, if you want some, we've got some exciting announcements at the end, um, and some questions we have, so stick around, but, uh, first off, Wizards of the Coast, uh, and I'm sure you've heard of this, Justin, but they have been releasing in little chunks, uh, some of the material, uh, for people to just look over, try out, see if they like it or hate it, you know, and then give feedback, uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about, the first little chunk uh, which was of their unearthed arcana character origins. Exactly. Uh, and we we talked about kind of what, uh, Wizards of the Coast's 1D&D announcement back on episode 61 of the show. So if you want more in-depth information, you can check that out. As well, you can get the unearthed arcana PDF for character origins by going to the link in the show notes. Um, it's labeled D&D Beyond. Uh, you're going to have to log in and enable 1D&D playtest material, but it's free, so no worries after that. Um, but today, our, our goal is to basically give the facts, kind of fact by fact, and after each fact, give an opinion. So here's one thing that the document says. Here's a little bit of how we feel about that. And the first thing that I noticed, and it's a super subtle thing, you actually, if you read pretty fast, you won't get it. But the first thing I noticed is that in the first paragraph of determining your origin, it says, after choosing your character's class, comma, it's time to consider the character's origin. Now, if you've read through the player's handbook, you'd notice that that's kind of a switch because in the player's handbook of D&D 5e, you pick your race first and then your class. But it seems that in one D&D, that's switching it. And I think that might be more because people come to the gaming table with the idea of, oh, I want to play a cleric. And it's like, okay, well, tell me more about your cleric. And and then you say a little bit more about their background. So I think maybe that's why they're doing that. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that 
um it's just a little it's kind of a flipping of the way we think of it uh but in a way i kind of think it's great you know because they're kind of making this push to uh, not just make everything so like focused on like oh stereotypical you know your race is that you know is this type of thing you're an orc cool that means you're just stereotypical orc like some of their changes i've noticed have been like to break that apart so it's like hey you are you know this this race but that rate you're that race within the context of the class Mm -hmm. and and it's even interesting kind of like if you move on to the next part they break down like what your character origin is um and they break it into three parts which i'm like that's great you know because uh it's not just like oh you're a you're a dwarf (laughs) probably mind i guess you know it's like no you've got to figure out each part so first they say who are the character's ancestors that that's race and how did the character spend the years leading up to a life of adventure that's their background um and also you know their language as well and and so they kind of break it down um into the uh character origin overview and you have a lot of different things there right like for uh for race traits you've got like creature type size speed lifespan special traits um each of those can kind of like be broken down a bit more but uh, i'm glad that they kind of are showing that like hey even within each of these uh races there are different traits you know yeah yeah and i actually do like that in a way um it is it it is making it more make more sense uh because you know orcs in whatever world you have probably have tusks right they probably have green tinged skin but you might have mm-hmm. differences between an orc shaman, an orc priest, an orc paladin, an, or- an orc warcaster, and those differences would also include some of their natural abilities, because a lot of us go towards things that we're naturally better at than worse at, uh, and I-, I just like how they're kind of simplifying it and saying the things that everyone actually does share, for example human beings the race of human beings we all have five fingers right uh those are going to be part of your racial traits but not every human being is smart athletic Uh, you know what i mean Uh, but one thing i did want to mention also and this is kind of a a tooting my own horn uh, before i would read this back in episode 60 i talked about a few ways to better write backstories and it did talk about your ancestors basically describe the type of people who led up to your birth, you know, your parents, things like that, which informs Mm -hmm. on your racial traits as well as writing out your backstory of what did you do before adventuring? And that should also lead to your background traits. Uh, And those background traits, as we've probably discussed already, uh, include your ability score bonuses, your skill proficiencies, your tool proficiencies, languages, feats. That's pretty new, actually. uh, And equipment. Yeah, and and I was just uh, earlier today. I was looking at the uh, character races and, and something because we're commenting. You know, we're making mm-hmm. given feedback. Uh, I do like how for each of the races, um, like they do have like like obviously it's a small thing, but the size. I I like how they have like for <laughs> some of them they've got like the medium. You know, for, like for humans, let's take humans, for example. It's like medium, uh, four to seven feet tall or small, two to four feet tall. And I'm like, that's cool. You know, it's a little bit of less work. And, and it's another way of deconstructing uh, the races, because if you're first choosing a class, um, I think that that's going to make it so that if you choose a class, then you can choose whatever whatever race afterwards. I, uh, but like then like you can kind of customize each race as well. Uh, by being like, oh, even within each race, like humans, you could technically be small. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to be a halfling if you're a rogue. You know, you could just be a small human. That's fine. Yeah. Um, but I, I really love the uh, the special traits. The special traits is just honestly much better than, you know, I feel like they've upgraded it significantly uh, compared to what they've done in the past. Um, because like dwarves, that's what they used in the video as an example. 
like a dwarf, they just get all these special traits like dark vision, dwarven resilience, you know, mm-hmm. uh, dwarven toughness, forge wise, stone cunning. And these things like do something like specific. Um, and it's not just a one time thing, you know, it's not just a one time stat buff. Like even uh, like dwarven toughness it kind of seems like a boring trait uh, in terms of like mechanics, but it's so much better than what you would see in the old system. Like, uh, your hit point maximum increases by one and increases by one again whenever you gain a level. So it's like, oh, so basically the hit points, it's not just initially you're getting plus one to constitution. It's like, no, you're getting like extra hit points and it adds up each level, you know? I, I just like little changes like that that make it so that your racial tr- choices um, actually like kind of build on each other and are useful throughout the time and not just at character creation, right? I agree completely. And it also, it does speak a lot more towards that idea of your race bestows the, the, the boons and curses of your ancestors and you get to carry those, but your background kind of deals with a lot more of your choices that you've made. And uh, just so you know, listener, some of the races that in character origins, the sheet that Wizards of the Coast have kind of put out as races that they're considering, kind of being the starting races. Some of those races are humans, Ardlings, which are kind of the, uh, not necessarily replacement for uh, Hmm. ASMR, but they are the ASMR equivalent. They're essentially the opposite of tieflings. There are dragonborn, dwarf, elf, gnome, halfling, uh, this one I find very interesting is orc. Instead of half orc, it's just orc. Uh, and then the final one is tiefling. Uh, and uh, no doubt we'll see a lot more races come out in later playtest editions, I guess. But this is what they're considering right now. Yeah, and and they have a great list. I, you're going to see pretty much all of the big ones, you mm-hmm. know, that you expected. But, um, but yeah, so... I would say for each of you, take a a chance to look through each of them. Um, I think that they really have tried to make each of the races like more, you know, more interesting, more uh, gameplay rather than stat uh, like focused. And and so take a look. I I still need to go through with a fine tooth comb Mm -hmm. and see if there's anything that I that I just plain disagree with. Mm -hmm. But I like I like what I've seen so far. Yeah. Um, and then uh, moving on to character backgrounds. So uh, what I noticed with the uh, character backgrounds is, uh, you know, obviously it's going to have a lot of, um, you know, a lot of the basic things that you expect, right? Like ability scores, like skill proficiencies, things like that. Uh, but uh, one thing that I really like is how they, um, how they kind of make it more, focused on like a profession Uh, like like well at least their sample backgrounds do and i think the sample backgrounds are a great way Mm -hmm. especially for beginners you know if you don't want to like put together your own (laughs) situation then they have a lot of wonderful things like the acolyte artisan cultist uh guard you know plain old guard farmer and each of these have like just a whole uh like let me take farmer right They've got plus two constitution, plus one wisdom, uh, skill proficiencies, animal handling, nature. Because they say that typically, you know, you're going to have, uh, you know, two of the skills that are going to get proficient with, right? Tool proficiency, carpenters, tools, language, halfling, um, feet, tough. And so, like, uh, I just like, um, like that as an example. It's like, hey, your background, it's not something to break the game with Mm -hmm. but it's but it's a nice place to be like hey this is where you're starting from and and it just adds a little it fleshes out your character a little bit mechanically because obviously with the race they're not doing that as much and so with the background they're they're doing a little bit more of the typical stuff for sure Uh, one thing i think is that a lot of people probably complained about starting at level one with basically being a nobody um, yep. this, this background thing, I think takes care of that. And, you know, like Bill Bobaggins wasn't a nobody. He was a fairly well-to-do halfling in the Shire who had land property and enough to eat, you know, 
and starting him out at level one doesn't necessarily, you know, show that. And I think these backgrounds really do. Uh, a few backgrounds that in the sample list are, are new because it did take a lot of them from the player's handbook in 5e, but uh, it added farmer, guard, guide, laborer, and pilgrim. And I, I do like all of those because, you know, how many times do you just want to be a farmer and be like called to adventure? Um, yep. Another thing that I found very interesting was in talking about the background, it said there are three methods to picking a background. And the first method was creating a background. The second method was choosing one from a sample background. A third method was choosing one from the sample background and then tweaking it. And I find it very interesting that they first listed creating a background. And here's a, a, uh, a Justin prediction. When 1 D&D comes out, or even in the months leading up to it and after, we will see a large uh, explosion of kind of homebrew content being centered around creating backgrounds that are interesting, new, and unique, and that give you kind of different flavors. So uh, check back with me in like a year or two, and uh, I'll tell you if I was right. But I, I wanted to read the rules for creating a background because I think that's really important because if you do want to play test this at home, this is how you start. So uh, you start with background features, ability scores. When you determine your character's ability scores, choose two of them, increase one by two and the other by one. Alternatively, choose three ability scores and increase each of them by one. Next, choose your skill proficiencies by choosing two skills and your character gains proficiency with those skills. Next, for tool proficiencies, choose one tool and gain proficiency with it. Uh, for language, choose one language from the standard languages and rare languages tables. And, and uh, those are later in the, the document. Uh, and your character knows that language. Next, you choose one first level feat and you gain that feat. And finally, for equipment, you gain 50 gold, po uh, gold coins. GP? Gold points? Is that what GP is for? Gold pieces. Gold probably. pieces. Gosh, gold pieces. Yeah. I'm so stupid. <laughs> Uh, 50 gold no gold pieces. points. I love it. <laughs> I was like gold <laughs> points. That's it. That's new. It's not new. Uh, 50 gold pieces to spend on starting equipment. And then you keep anything you don't spend. Uh, so if you want to do your own background right now, that's exactly how you do it. Yeah. And, uh, as part of your background, it'll, especially if you're choosing one of the sample, uh, uh backgrounds, uh, now, just as, a, as an aside, I said kind of flippantly that you could create your own. You can, because like Justin was saying, there is a there's a method to the madness. You know, you're like, oh, I choose this for uh, for the ability scores, this for the um, the skill proficiency, things like that. You can do that, and that's great. Um, but and then as part of that, you can choose a first level feat, uh, or if you choose uh, one of the backgrounds like farmer that I was going through before. Uh, their first level feat is tough. Um, and this is another thing about making your character right from the get-go a, a unique uh, individual who actually has something that they're bringing to the table rather than a blank slate that you kind of need to build out. Um, and so like tough, it's a first level feat. Uh, and, and something that they mentioned here is, you know, uh, each feat, you, sometimes they have pre prerequisites, sometimes they can be repeatable. Um, pretty much all of these first level feats uh, are not repeatable or they, and they don't require prerequisites, which makes sense because they're first level, right? Like they don't, <laughs> there's no feat that you could have before this. So of course it's, it, uh, it doesn't have a pre pre prerequisite. Um, but tough, which the farmer would have, um, it has, uh, it, the the feat means your hit point maximum increases by an amount equal to twice your character level when you gain this feat. Uh, whenever you, whenever you gain a level hereafter, your hit point maximum increases by an additional two point uh, two hit points. So it's kind of similar. Strangely, I don't know how this happened, but like I was reading about the dwarven toughness, this tough is just like hey, you don't have to be a dwarf, you can just be tough. Now, if you had a dwarf farmer then they would both have dwarf uh, dwarven toughness and they could have and they would just have tough so they'd be double tough mm -hmm. you know that's um, a beefy farm boy as a beefy farm uh, dwarf you know <laughs> uh 
but yeah, I just like um, I like the I like these feats for the first level. Initially, can I be honest? When I first heard that they were like, "Oh, you get feats at first level," I was like, "Whoop de do, huh?" <laughs> um, but I do like in terms of building a character. I think that it is a, a, a small touch that can actually mean a lot. It means that your character background has a lot more. It's more fleshed out. It's more uh, three-dimensional. And, and I think it can make uh, new players especially get into their role faster, right? Yeah. Um, full disclosure, I actually haven't read the next... Um, by the time this episode comes out, uh, the second edition of Playtest Material has come out, which is expert classes, I believe, or expertise classes. Um, so I haven't read those. Uh, so I don't actually know what classes look like quite yet in one D&D, but um, here's another prediction that feats will have a bigger role and there might even be like tons more specific for each individual class that will make kind of branching out in class subclasses and even sub subclasses possibly uh, much more possible because the feats will make it much more customizable. But also, one thing I noticed, and kind of back to my you know t- point about Wizards of the Coast putting out first that they want you to create your own background, I think with this playtest material, it shows that they're much more interested in players customizing their characters and creating characters from the story up, because yeah. you start with the story, and then it sounds like they want you to kind of talk to your DM and, and find or create the background perfect for your character rather than you know, min-maxing from the get-go, which I find is very interesting. Um, but, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I, I, I completely agree with what you're saying there. I think that uh, they are making it more character-focused, which I think for everybody it makes it a better, uh, a more inclusive game because I think a lot of people, uh, it takes a sec to get the joy of min-maxing, right? Because mm-hmm. I, th- I think that that's a little bit for more uh, experienced players, right? Um, for new players and players, and, and honestly, even experienced players, like everybody can, uh, can find good characters and good story approachable, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah, I, I like the focus. Uh, we'll have to see, you, you know, my guess is that in terms of their like making character origins, they're probably not going to have to make too many changes there. Um, is my guess. Yeah. Because it it's pretty simple. You you can tell that they're trying to keep it pretty simple, uh, as it should, because creating a character shouldn't take twenty days or anything. But but yeah, I, I like uh, how they're going so far. Yeah. To be honest, I completely agree. I don't think they're going to change very much of this. And yeah. <clears throat> when it first came out, I wasn't too fond of kind of like they they, they nerfed the race bit, yeah. you know. And I wasn't too yep. fond of that because I was like, no, like I love dwarves being dwarves and orcs being orcs and, and crap like that. Um, but this makes it so you can customize and still retain the dwarfiness of it if you want. Or you can make something far off in left field and the dm doesn't have to do as much work creating up all sorts of strange rules instead they're built in or you can just make it a dwarf dwarf and you know everyone's happy or you can't you know like either way so i i do like how they're moving it's going to be different though for sure yeah absolutely and uh, i think some people especially those that are experienced with the game they're they're gonna have some issues with that Mm -hmm. you know that's that's normal uh, people are going to want to min max and <laughs> do it well, and and, there, and there's certainly a game, and like certain groups that like really thrive on that. Yeah. But I think they're trying to avoid that for the average player. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, yeah, I mean, otherwise, there's not much more, uh, like in terms of this, uh, this first material that they released. Mm-hmm. I'm just kind of going through it here, seeing if there's anything we missed. One thing I will say is that there are a ton of feats in there. And I think they even oh, yeah. uh, um, listed a few spells. And, and there's a big glossary at the bottom. <coughs> we didn't go over the feats because there's too many to really go over. And we didn't go over the glossary because you, if, you should probably already know that. Or, you know, if you don't, please email us and we'll... Uh, we'll figure something out but <clears throat> the rest is uh mostly just 
kind of reference material. Yeah, exactly. Um, but honestly, uh, everybody, get your get your sticky paws into this. Just uh, just rummage through it. Make it all good. <laughs> but yeah, I think that there's a lot here uh, worth looking at. Um, they aren't uh, revealing anything too crazy at this point. I think they're uh, playing it safe, and they'll do some of the more questionable choices later. So <laughs> we'll have to uh, we'll have to see that, and we'll be right there ground floor with you guys um but that is uh that's a podcast before we leave we got a few announcements um first off we want to remind everyone of the upcoming uh october one shot being hosted by none other than bone daddy rob from this dungeon is occupied uh we've done a podcast with him he's great uh make sure that you um get on on our email list uh, if you want to be a part, uh, I believe that one's full, right? Yes. But if yeah. you also want to watch it, um, yes. you know, make sure you sign up on the email list because uh, we haven't quite nailed down the time. Uh, the date is October 22nd, but the time is still uh, in flux right now, I believe. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So once we get you on the email list, we'll send out, uh, you know, we'll send out a calendar invite with a date and time so that you've got that. Um, otherwise, I mean, Justin, you were saying that you got a glimpse of, uh, of Rob's story. How, how is it? Uh, it's, it's really cool. So I'll, I'll just share this little bit. The, the, and this was, it's funny. So like the day before he told me this, I was reading in the monster manual and I read this specific part. So, and I was like, oh, I should make a story about that. And then Rob did it, but whatever. Um, so essentially you have been charged by a specific group to investigate uh, a colony of Kuatoa. And Kuatoa are fish-like people, and they have this very strange ability that, as a group, they can essentially, through their faith and belief that something exists, they can make it real. And some very strange things have been happening, and from what I've understood, there's legend of, like, this Kuatoa group manifesting like an evil arch deity or something like that and you have to go figure it out uh so there's a little taste for you of bone daddy rob's excellent story and i'm ex- i'm super excited oh that sounds so good yeah but everybody who's heard that you should get excited because you can watch it it's going to be great mm-hmm. um otherwise uh we also wanted and we're going to have the link for you to sign up for uh, our email list by the way mm-hmm. Otherwise, we are thinking about uh, doing a Discord, uh, but we but we want to see if there's any interest, right? Uh, so, uh, if you are interested in uh, in doing in us running a Discord, kind of having a little community where we can chat, talk about D and D, about DMing specifically, um, go to dun- betterdungeonmaster.com forward slash Discord. We'll also have that in the notes, mm-hmm. but and and let us know. Uh, we really look forward to your feedback. Uh, that's why we also always on every podcast we've got the link for feedback. It, we we've shortened the form. We just want any input that you have at all. It always helps our podcast be better. Um, yeah, you go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh, and the link for that is betterdungeonmaster.com/feedback, and then the link for giving us your email to sign up to watch the one shot is betterdungeonmaster.com slash email. Perfect. Honestly, uh, for you listeners, we are so grateful every time uh, that you do listen. Uh, We feel like the luckiest podcasters in the world. Um, And it's, you guys are just so awesome and fun. Uh, And we look forward to building deeper relationships with you. Uh, We'll be back next Thursday with another episode. Uh, Thanks for joining us in the tavern today. Until next time, let's go ahead and roll initiative. Thank you for listening to today's show. Uh, We really appreciate your support and your patronage. We have a few more announcements to go over. Uh, First, did you ever fall in love with the library as a kid? It was a place where you could experience a thousand stories without having to buy a thousand books. That is what Monsters.Rent can do for your D&D campaign. You can rent and swap out as many quality miniature monsters and creatures for your D&D party as you could ever want, without having to buy them. 
you can rescue villagers from a kobold camp, or lead your party through the fighting forest, or many more adventures. We're coming out with new bundles all the time. Just sign up for our subscription to get access to your own personal library of minis. Go to monsters.rent to find out more. That's the website, monsters, with an S, dot rent. Get your library pass to a world of minis today. We also wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Stardust and Dragons. I'm going to let one of the cast of Stardust and Dragons, Christian Hatcher, and his crew tell you a little bit more about it. This August, a new adventure podcast is coming to a platform near you, filled with action. You one of the two of them. We can't keep right. taking hits like that. Drama. Everything that she's been doing, every, she, everything she's going to do, finally sets in. And Stardust. Help! Help! <coughs> Someone, please! Find out more about this epic odyssey at stardustanddragons.com, where adventure awaits in the stars. That's all the announcements we have today. Again, thank you so much for everything you do for us. You make this show possible. Like we said before, we'll be back next week with another great episode. And until then, let's go ahead and roll initiative.